by Julie Usher, Recipes for a Sweet Life. Welcome back. Now that it's spring and the leaves are on the trees, it's time to revisit the beauty of chocolate leaves. If you recall from a previous video, back around Christmas time, I used chocolate leaves to make a beautiful wreath that I displayed flat on a glass cake stand. Today I'm going to take that idea up a notch, quite literally, because I'm going to be standing the leaves on end to create beautiful little dessert cups. You can also make much larger leaf cups, if you will, for full-size dessert presentations simply by scaling up the size of the chocolate leaf. But we're going to be working on the smaller version today. It's quite straightforward. It just involves a few ingredients. Let's review what you'll need. First, you'll need some chocolate. I've got white chocolate here. You want to use either a compound or coating chocolate. Otherwise, you're going to have to temper your real chocolate. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. I've got white compound chocolate that I'm working with today that doesn't require any tempering, simply melting and painting on the leaves. You can also make the leaves dark chocolate, of course, or a light chocolate color by adding a little bit of dark chocolate to the white. So I've got that there if we want to play with the color later. You'll need some things to mold the leaves, and what I'm going to use are real leaves. Cleaned, wiped dry, non-toxic, and pesticide-free. In my first chocolate leaf video, I talk a lot about what leaves work well and which don't. So you might want to refer to that for details on what to look for. I'll review that only briefly in this video. We'll also need some things for creating the base of the cup. So I've got some simple deli containers, which I use to create the base for the large dessert, and a simple paper cup that I cut down to create the base for the dessert cup. And then once the leaves are molded, we want to give them a little texture, accentuate their vein structure, and we're just going to be dusting them with a little bit of dry, unsweetened cocoa powder and a soft brush. I'm going to move on to the first step, which is melting the chocolate. I've got a whole other video that talks about that in detail. I don't have a microwave, so I actually just do it in a double boiler, a makeshift double boiler, a pan with a little bit of water in it, and a bowl that sits nicely in top. You don't necessarily want the bowl resting in the water, and you want to make sure you melt it over very, very low heat so the chocolate doesn't seize. If it gets too hot, it will thicken and become very lumpy. We're going to melt that and start promptly on painting the leaves. Okay, I've got my chocolate nicely melted. You'll see I didn't overheat it, and you can tell because it's flowing relatively quickly off the spoon. If it gets too hot, it'll be very lumpy and hard to spread. Okay, so let's start first with making the leaves. I think I need about 15 to go around this two and a half inch diameter cup, but of course that's gonna depend on the size of your leaf. I've got these very narrow ones. And just briefly, the leaves that tend to work best for chocolate molding, of course, are non-toxic, clean, and dry. If there's any moisture on it, it'll leave a spot on the chocolate. You also want to choose a leaf that's relatively shiny and has nice vein structure because we're trying to pick up the vein. So this has a very nice central vein which is going to be highlighted really nicely when we dust it with cocoa. And it's somewhat shiny on the back side. If it's a fuzzy leaf, the chocolate will tend to stick to it more. Uh, one more thing about the leaves, actually you want to avoid any leaves with holes or tears because the, that will be a place where the chocolate will flow through onto the back of the leaf and it'll be harder to get the leaf off. So we're not going to work with those two. So as far as painting on the leaves, some people will use a brush to paint on leaves or in, in other molds, but I don't like to use something with bristles because sometimes the bristles fall off and then the brush is completely difficult to clean once the chocolate sets up and it. it's very hard to clean. So I prefer to work with something smooth and straight edged. This is just the, the handle of a craft paintbrush. The bristles fell off and I'm gonna just dab the chocolate on with that. It's an easy to clean tool and it gets the chocolate exactly where it needs to go. So I'm just taking a little bit on the end of my craft paintbrush and painting it on the vein side of the leaf because you want to pick up the vein structure, of course. You wouldn't want to do it on the other side of the leaf. And do your best to keep chocolate from getting on the back because, as I mentioned before, if it gets on the back, it's harder to remove the leaf later once the chocolate sets up. And it's okay if it's a little bit messy at the end. But I am going to put it down on a clean area on a silicone mat to set up so that if there is any on the back and it sticks, it'll easily pop up off the silicone mat. Let me just do a couple more, and we'll set those in the fridge or freezer to set up. This is a compound chocolate, as I said. It doesn't require tempering. It just requires melting. And this would actually set up at room temperature, at a cool room temperature. It would set up quite quickly, but I'm going to accelerate the process 
in the fridge. When I do that, I only like to leave it in the fridge for a couple of minutes because if you leave it in too long, longer than it takes to set up, moisture can accumulate on the chocolate and you don't want that either. Just a word on coating or compound chocolates versus tempering chocolate. I tend to prefer to work with real chocolate when I can because I prefer the flavor. Real chocolate has cocoa butter in it. A compound chocolate has the cocoa butter um, substituted, the cocoa butter in it has been substituted with palm oil. So it sets up firmly at room temperature and firm and crisp and shiny. Real chocolate won't do that unless you take it through a process called tempering, which is a very specific process of working it and bringing it up and down through different temperatures so it sets crisply. It's important for this project for the chocolate to set firm and crisp because it's going to be standing upright and you don't want it to melt. If you're going to have this on display for any period of time, you don't want it to wilt. So for this project, either use tempered real chocolate or a compound also known as a coating or a summer chocolate sometimes and you'll have the best results. Before I set these in the fridge to chill, I'm just going to set them aside and we're going to prepare the base for the cup. We need something to attach the leaves to. And to do that, I'm creating a mold out of something that I found at the grocery store. So get creative. You don't have to get fancy special molds to mold chocolate. You can often use things that you can find around the house. So I just took a simple paper cup and cut it down so I could more easily get the chocolate in because I'm going to be piping it into the base of this. It doesn't, again, need to be perfect, but I do want enough height that I have that when I mold it, I create a piece that's tall enough that I can actually attach the leaves to it. So I'm cutting it about a quarter inch tall, and we'll probably fill it about an eighth of an inch full to a quarter of an inch, just again to make sure that I have enough, enough of a base to put the chocolate on. So I'm piping that in. You could spoon it in, but I find piping just gives me a little bit more control. Generally, I like to pipe in concentric circles from the outside to the end so that the chocolate initially lays pretty smoothly. You can also shake it to level it out if you need to. So that's it. These can also set at room temperature because I'm using a compound chocolate. It'll just take a little bit longer than the leaves because it's thicker chocolate. So because I'm on video time, I do want to speed up the process. I am also going to set these in the fridge for a couple of minutes just until they start to separate from the edge of the container. Okay, while well, that chocolate is setting in the fridge for a few minutes, I just wanted to talk a little bit about tinting chocolate. You could make these in different colors. If you wanted to tint it green, you could. But you want to make sure you use an oil-based coloring or a candy coloring, not a water-based coloring, because any small amount of water will cause the chocolate to thicken or seize. The other way you can add nice natural colors is simply to add other chocolate to it. So I'm just going to drop a few pastilles or pellets of dark chocolate in here. We'll sit it back over on the stove over some heat, and I'll show you what a nice, you'll see it's beginning to start to melt with just the heat of the water underneath it. And this can create a really nice soft chocolate tone too. So you can get varying shades of brown which is really beautiful on this dessert as well. These leaves were literally just in the freezer. I actually had them in the freezer, not the fridge. Either will work for just a minute or two. And you can see how easily the leaf peels off. Now I, I knocked the tip off of that, but that's not a worry. I can come in with scissors and actually trim that up if I don't like the fact that I knocked the point off. So again, just unmolding, I just lightly touch them. Here I might have difficulty getting this leaf off because I got chocolate on the back. So just, I'm just pulling very gently. And here I would want to trim that off because I've got a little bit of a leaf stuck in there. That's relatively easy to do. This is a cleaner leaf, and I think you'll see that the pull is a lot easier. They look great. More difficult to get it off. So you want to pay attention when you're piping, painting your leaves, not to get any, any chocolate on the back side. But I've got a number of good leaves. And then the next step is to accentuate the vein structure. And I've done that already on some, as you can see, by dusting with cocoa. Same chocolate, just lightly dusted with cocoa. And it just highlights the vein quite nicely. 
I'm going to show you how I do that. And you can do that immediately. So I tend to like to let my leaves come a little bit more to room temperature before I do that, because if there's any condensation on those that came out of the freezer or fridge, the cocoa will tend to go down more spotty as opposed to more evenly. So I'm just doing a light dusting of cocoa on the end of my brush. And I really probably don't want to do it over my finished leaves. And I've got a nice soft brush. You don't want a really stiff brush because it'll scratch the chocolate. And that's what that looks like. Let me do a couple more. I need about 15 of these, I think, to get all the way around. So we want to do at least that many. Sometimes I find when I brush with the side of the brush, I pick up more of the side vein structure. OK, so I think I've got plenty here. I'm going to go ahead and unmold the base of the cup. I like to do that. I do like to chill the base of the cup because it'll be easier to attach the chocolate leaves to it if the base is actually cold, because I'm going to be applying chocolate to stick the two together, and it'll just set that much more quickly. So I'm going to pull that actually out of the freezer, and we'll get to putting it together. We're ready for the final assembly step. This is where we're headed. This is what the cup's going to look like, very delicate and elegant. But first things first, we need to unmold the base. This has been setting just for a few minutes, a little bit longer than the leaves. You'll see it nicely pops out. I've got a nice enough rim, enough of a rim that I can attach the leaves pretty firmly to that. And to do that, I'm going to be working with melted chocolate. That's what I've got in my parchment cone. And because this is cold, hopefully it will set rel relatively quickly so I won't have to spend a lot of time holding my leaves in place before they stand on their own. We'll see how long it takes. I'm just going to simply glue them all the way around like so, attaching them with chocolate. You can either choose all the same height leaf or try to get it close to the same height so you have a really uniform cup or you can vary the heights and shapes of the leaves too for that matter just to create more interest. It's really up to you. Sometimes some leaves, because of their shape, will just fit more nicely together, leaving less of an opening at the bottom. I'm trying to minimize these openings around the bottom because we are going to fill it later. So you'll see it just takes a few seconds, really, for the chocolate to set up if your base is cold. It might take a little bit longer for it to set up if your base was not cold. I didn't like that one. It was leaning into the inside of the cup too much. I want to if anything, because the leaves curve in at the top, if anything, I want to have them leaning out a little bit. Okay, so I've just about got the last leaf on. If you want, you can always reinforce with a little more chocolate from the inside, as I'm doing here, just to give it a little bit more stability, because, of course, that blob of chocolate on the inside won't be seen. We're going to be filling this with a lovely cocoa whipped cream and some fresh berries. If you're going to be storing these, because I've used a compound chocolate that is solid at room temperature, I can just put them in airtight containers and store them in a cool room, sealed. If you were using a tempered chocolate, the same thing would be the case. If you hadn't tempered this chocolate, then you would probably want to store them in the fridge just for longevity. But again, I would have them also in a container sealed because any kind of moisture from the fridge will be attracted to the chocolate and you'll end up with some moisture on the chocolate if you don't cover it. But I'm going to go ahead and present these immediately. Just simply move this over carefully onto a little presentation plate. And then I'm going to fill it. It's always easier to move it onto the final plate, then fill it, and then move it filled with the plate because these are delicate cups. For the finishing touch, I'm just going to fill them very simple with fresh summer berries because we're entering that season and some whipped cream. But my whipped cream is a little special because I've got a little bit of cocoa powder and powdered sugar ad added to it. So it's sweetened and it's got a nice chocolatey color, which I think will contrast the cups nicely and also pick up some of the cocoa accents on the leaves. 
Now I blended mine last night and it got very soft. It's best to actually whip this right before you want to pipe it so that it maintains its volume because I don't have any whipped cream stabilizers in it. But the good news is, is you can re-whip it if, as long as the cream is cold and it's been refrigerated. So I'm going to do that now. So you don't want to whip it too much that it turns to butter, but I want it to have nice soft peaks that look graceful because I'm going to pipe it through a pastry bag here in a bit. But before we pipe it, I'm just going to toss a few little berries carefully in the bottom of each. More than a few. Several. I've got blackberries here, but any berry will do. And of course you could fill these with anything. You could even layer them with cake and filling if you wanted to. Just tuck it in there very carefully. So you can see it's much thicker now, just with a simple re-whipping on high speed for a couple of minutes. And again, you could spoon this in, but piping just allows you a little bit more control. And hopefully we'll have a nice, pretty looking ruffle to it because of the tip we're using. I think that looks nice. Beautiful. Now you could top with a berry or a piece of mint, but I just love this tone on tone effect. I think it's really, really quite elegant. So simple chocolate dessert cups. Again, you can do them in small size or scale them up to create a full size presentation. That one in front of you has actually got layers of cake and filling on the inside. And if you want to lay them flat into little liners for dessert plates, I've got a whole other video that talks about that. If you go back to my chocolate wreath video, you'll learn about how to make those underliners, also the wreath, and more do's and don'ts about which leaves to choose and which ones not to choose for the project. Till next video, live sweetly.